enthusiasts. This is Bram Luyten with Admire and in this short video I will show you some of the basics of making post calls to the DSpace REST API and what we're trying to figure out is uh, the answer to the following question. If the REST API creates an item in a collection where specific policies have been set up, will the REST API item creation respect these policies? So let's take it step by step. So what I've done here is I've created a collection in DSpace that does not have the anonymous read policy. So we see here in the URL this collection is currently has a handle, uh, handle identifier 82. But I will need the UUID of this collection to make REST API calls to it. So the way to get this, if you click on edit collection as an admin, then you will see that the UUID of the collection actually shows up in the URL bar on top. So this number I've already saved locally, but if you want to repeat this experiment, this is a number that, uh, that you will need. Um, so what I've done, and I explained it already, is that in assign roles, by default, you will normally see that the default read access is associated with anonymous. But in this case, I've already created a group so that um, default read access is restricted to this group. So actually, if all works well, newly created items should not have anonymous read access. So this is the part for the DSpace UI. I will now open Postman and Postman is a free tool that you can download to make REST API requests easy. You can also make them directly from the command line, uh, but Postman is a really handy and very powerful tool to make these things a little bit easier. So when you've never uh, used Postman before or when you don't have anything in your workspace, you don't have any collections on the left side. So REST API calls are grouped into collections. So collection could be one, one kind of API. So don't, don't confuse this, the collections in Postman with collections in DSpace. Those are two totally different things. To make it easy for you, we have documented all of the calls into a JSON file that you can easily import into Postman and you can get this file in the comments of this YouTube video. I've already downloaded it locally. So I will create, I will click import and I will drop this file, this JSON file in here. And then I have, um, when I click import and in my collections, I will see that I have a number of calls available to me that will uh, query the demo DSpace server, the public demo instance. Let's go over them one by one. So the login call is a call that you make against that endpoint. It's also a post, re it's a post request. And what you send along is the email address and the password of the admin. So this is a publicly known password for the demo instance. And um, what you will get back is a J session ID, is an ID. And actually in all subsequent calls that need to be authorized, we don't send the username and the password, but we send this ID along. So I am, uh, and just to be sure, yeah, the ID, it's not present now. So I will send this login call. And I am getting back um, the test. Uh, I'm getting back this cookie or this J session ID is what I get back in the response. So it's a 200, it's an okay response. And I've received this J session ID that I need for subsequent calls. One easy subsequent call to make to see whether your login was successful is the status call. And you will see in the status call that uh, normally when you do these things over the command line, you will need to copy paste this uh, J session ID. But Postman is clever enough to see when, whenever a cookie is set or whenever you get such a J session ID back, that Postman will set it automatically for you as a header for your uh, next calls. So we just have this header, we have no body in this request and I will send it to the status endpoint. And in the status endpoint we see we're authenticated through, this is all fine, now we can proceed. And the last call is the call that gives me item creation. 
And for item creation, we make a post call against a specific collection. So items are always have to belong in one or more collections. So that's why the item creation endpoint is actually an endpoint in uh, DSpace 6 REST API uh, that is nested under a specific collection. This is exactly why we need that ID that I told you about before to include it here to make sure that we create this item in the right collection. What else do we have here? In our headers we have our uh, J session ID that we've seen before and in the body, the body is actually um, a metadata representation of the metadata that we want to add into this item. So let's see that we, we can change it here to my test item. Um, and then we can, uh, it can be anything, you can supply any metadata that you want. And if we now send this, we are actually uh, creating an item in this space against the REST API. So we are sending this along. Apologies for the noise. <laughs> and the uh, test item has been successfully created. But what we wanted to test out is whether this, um, this item, item that now has handle 85, whether it uh, respects the collections policies. So what I'm going to do is um, when I go here, so now I'm logged in as an administrator. So as an administrator, I should be seeing this item and indeed it is present here and I see it on the home page, but I will open an incognito window and in that incognito window, now we will learn whether it was successful or not or what DSpace actually does and the item is restricted. So actually in this experiment, we've learned that item creation over the REST API does respect collection uh, permissions. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this useful. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought um, or if you need more instructions. Thank you.